Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build the ideal workflow for software development. Please note that this is specifically just for software development. This is only when code is being written. If you have other steps in your process, such as the QA, end to end, deployments, future support, heck, even scope refinement, that is not covered in the scope of this video. I am strictly just focused on the software development portion. I'm going to show you based on hundreds of projects that I've configured over the years, the most critical steps that you need in your workflow. Please make sure you subscribe if you are not already. Please make sure you drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. All right, so I am in a company managed software based project. Now this will work for a team managed, but the steps are gonna be slightly different. You won't do it the same way, but the statuses, the statuses that I'm gonna share with you will apply so you can add them using that, whatever method you use for adding statuses in your team managed project. Anyways, coming over here, we're gonna to go to project settings and we're gonna to go to workflows. Now, one thing to note, because we are not gonna be deleting statuses, we're simply adding statuses. I can do it through here by clicking on this little pencil. But if you have a workflow where you know you're going to want to delete statuses, you're not going to be able to do it from here. You're going to have to go to the main workflow, make a copy of that workflow, make your modifications there, and then come back into your project and reapply that new workflow. Again, this is only if you want to delete. But since we're not going to delete, I'm just going to be able to click on the little pencil here and get started. Now, this particular workflow has already been created and it already has the right statuses. So I'm just going to show you how to add a status, but then I'm going to focus on the statuses that you need to have. So to add a status, all you do is click over here to add status, and then you type in the name of your status, click this little checkbox to allow all. Now this is optional. You don't have to do it, but if you check the checkbox, that says allow all statuses to transition to this one. This is basically going to add this little all. And what that means is, any status can go from any status to another status. So I like it. It requires your team to have a lot of trust. And if you don't have that trust and your team does need that handholding, then I recommend that you explicitly call out the transitions, but be aware that this can hurt team morale, but your mileage is going to vary. Uh, in this particular example, I'm just going to leave everything as dash all. And then I'm going to talk about the statuses that we need. The very first status that you should be adding is blocked. In your scrum meeting, your daily scrum, you have this topic of your impediments for your developers. Now, what better way to visualize what impediments your team has than by adding a column in the board that basically helps your team highlight those impediments. It makes it easy for your team. It makes it easy for your scrum master. And then when you get in the room with the decision makers, you have a list, a hit list of things that you got to basically tackle and resolve and mitigate those impediments. So add this status of blocked, very, very critical status to have. In progress is a default one. And the next one we're going to talk about is unit testing. If your team is not doing unit testing, then you are basically shooting yourself in the foot. Unit testing is really, really critical to the quality, to increasing the quality of your code. Every time that your developer writes some function, some functionality, heck, every time they write a line of code, there should be some sort of a unit test to make sure that that code is doing what it's supposed to do. If you're finding yourself in a situation where you have so many bugs coming out of your software shop, you should be addressing your problem at the beginning, which is at this unit testing. Obviously this is going to be based on really good requirements, good acceptance criteria, good definition of done and whatnot. But if you're not, if your team isn't accustomed to doing unit testing, you're not doing yourself any favors. And you should really add a status here to make sure that your team is doing unit level testing, which is your first layer of defense with respect to creating high quality software. Now, the next thing equally as important is a peer review process. So when your team pulls a, creates a pull request because they're basically done with their source code, there should be a peer review with two or three or more individuals in your team are reviewing that code. Because now, in theory, between the unit testing that you have some validation, some data that your code is good, and now you are having your peer reviewers look at your code, look at the outputs of those tests, and go, oh, this thing looks good. 
you increase your chances of producing higher quality software. Now, this isn't going to be a silver bullet. Things are always going to still make it fall through the cracks, but this at least makes it so that your stuff downstream isn't as buggy because the last place you want to find a bug is in production. And the first place you want to find it is here in these steps. So why not explicitly make those steps in your workflow so that your developers understand and can visualize on the board where all the work is. And then finally we have done. Now this will resolve the issue and this will close it out. And so this is kind of where your mileage is gonna vary. If you have a pretty well-defined QA process, you have a few options. You can basically add those statuses to, the, to this workflow and append it to it. And then basically the entire sprint, all of the process needs to get done. Or if you know that your QA usually doesn't work as quickly or doesn't work within the, the bounds of that sprint, then I recommend that you add the statuses here, but on the board for Scrum, for the software development, put those statuses there. And then any other statuses that belong to QA or any deployments or anything like that, you can move them over to a Kanban board. Now, another option that you have is to add a different issue type just specifically for the QA work and link the story with that QA work and then maybe tie them back with an epic or just tie them together by linking the issues together. Another option that you have is you move all this stuff to done and then your, your QA team will take it after the sprint's complete. So they'll take like a package of all the work that was done in that sprint and in the following sprint, they're working on the previous sprint's work while your development continues on to their sprint too. So you have a lot of different options. Pick whatever one works for you. I haven't seen a silver bullet. I haven't seen one that's like solves this whole QA and software development process problem, but I wanted to just focus on the software development because if you get that right, if you get your code correct, then you minimize the need to kind of have to like put out that fire over there. So make sure that this is correct over here and you should be good. Once you make your changes, make sure you hit publish draft. I don't typically copy or save a copy, but once you hit publish, we have one more step. You're basically redirected back to your project. So we got to go back here and then we're going to go to our board and we're going to click on this ellipses here, click on board settings. Once you click on board settings, we're going to go to columns. And all we got to do here is you'll see that we have our new statuses. We just need to add a couple of columns and basically add them there. So I'm going to add a column of blocked and this should basically grab my block status from the right and add it in here. There we go. And then I'm going to add peer review. And as long as you spell them exactly the same as the statuses that we just made, this should automatically like pop it in the right spot. And then we have unit test. And so we're just going to add these in and then I'm going to put blocked. Uh, I typically put it between to do and in progress, but it doesn't really matter where you put it. So once you have all your statuses here, then all you got to do is just click back to board and then you'll notice that all your statuses are there. And that's pretty much it. This is basically going to help you write some higher quality code, help you visualize those impediments, help you figure out where your PRs are stuck because sometimes your peer review process fails. Sometimes well, it doesn't fail, it gets roadblocked. Sometimes you, you're overwhelming your developers. They don't have time to review everything. Sometimes your builds are failing and you don't have time to build to take a look at those. And so by being able to visualize where each story is in this workflow, you'll be able to put the right fire extinguisher to that right fire and help make progress. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you drop a like. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It tremendously helps out the channel. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me.